Hello and welcome to Ruckasaurus Rex. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, PNSO's Ceratopsians. As you can see before you we've got uh, five uh, models of uh, Ceratopsian dinosaurs. Uh, PNSO actually has uh, another four that um, their newest ones, they're not displayed here because I haven't opened them up yet. I'm going to follow the same MO as I did with the Theropods. Uh, I will um, show uh, off these, uh, these Ceratopsians uh, here in this uh, group overview just to, uh, since this is a new channel, just to get uh, us caught up on what I do have. So when I do any comparisons, you will already know what I have uh, to compare with or if you uh, if I uh, if I uh, showcase a new dinosaur and uh, you may ask uh, for comparison and you'll already more or less know what I have and even if you don't uh, you, you can just ask and I'll either have it or I won't but anyway we've got five uh, Ceratopsian Ceratopsian dinosaurs were uh, exclusively relegated to the Cretaceous. They were all throughout the Cretaceous period, uh, all over the world, and uh, they had broken up into two different uh, subgroups. You've got um, one group is known as the uh, Chaz or Chasmosaurian group, and uh, the other would be the uh, Centrosaurian group. The differences between those, as you can see, uh, Ceratopsians, they are the thing that uh, makes them stand out, their most prominent feature that makes them unique amongst dinosaurs is uh, their frills uh, primarily and then of course ornamentation secondarily because the ornamentation of the horns and spikes uh, vary from species to species. But uh, it's there in those, uh, those uh, frills is uh, what uh, distinguishes between a Chasmosaurian dinosaur and a uh, Centrosaurian dinosaur. Uh, all the way in the back you see a Triceratops. That would be uh, a, uh, a Chasmosaurian dinosaur. I'm going to go back and forth between Chasmosaurian and Chasmosaurian. Uh, and uh, if you look at the four in front of it, you see that uh, uh, it lacks ornamentation along the frill and therein lies the difference one of the major differences uh, the other difference is uh, most of the time a centrosaurian dinosaur will have uh, that distinguishes them uh, besides having all kinds of crazy ornamentation along the frill they may or may not have a, uh, a prodigious a longer nasal horn um, that that just separates them too, uh, or something else in place of it. If you look over to uh, the left, we'll get to it when I do them individually. You'll see uh, that's a Pachyrhinosaurus over there to the left, and instead of a nasal horn, it has what's known as a boss, a big thick clump of bone uh, over the nose or beak area. But uh, we'll talk about that when when we roll past that particular dino. So, yep, anyhow, this is the uh, the march of the Ceratopsians. And uh, let's get it kicked off, shall we? First up to bat, we have Spinops. And uh, this would be uh, Duke the Spinops. And uh, giving you a 360 degree view of it, as you can see, uh, pretty uh, chunky looking dinosaur uh, and uh, of course the standout feature at uh, first glance as will be the case with all of the Ceratopsians would be the frill and all of the uh, ornamentation going on along there so uh, yeah you can see that let's take a closer look at Duke especially at that skull so looking up close and personal to Duke our Spinops uh, this is about as close really I can get uh, to look at the skull and have all of that big head in the uh, the viewfinder so uh, it is what it is but um, looking at it you can see uh, we'll go more profile and you see all of that 
you, he has the he is a uh, uh, a uh, centrosaurian dinosaur. You see, he has uh, he he actually is sporting uh, both of the characteristics that uh, would classify him as a uh, centrosaurian dinosaur. He's got the elongated nasal horn, and he's also sporting the ornamentation along the uh, the frill, as you see from those. Uh, those uh, two top pointing spikes and those curved down curved spikes right below them. He is also sporting a couple of uh, 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 horns above his eyes. And if you look on the sides there, I'll turn him up this way so you can see it better. I think you can. He's got spikes down there by his cheeks. There's one right there on his right side. So he's... Uh, pretty uh he's pretty uh, spiked up he also has the uh the beaked the beaked uh mouth that is also typical of ceratopsians and uh now that we've done that let me uh state this right now uh spinops was uh is only known from very fragmentary uh fossils this model is uh, based on other ceratopsians and what uh, scientists imagined uh, he would look like, it would look like. I say he because he's named Duke via PNSO. Uh, but they don't really have anything body-wise uh, in the fossil records to uh, tell about him. They're, they're going off of typical, you know, what they do have. They've got um, a lot of uh, skull fossils and uh, they use what they do know of ceratopsians to try to estimate uh, its size. In this case it's uh, believed that Spinops was about uh, 7 meters long which makes it close to 23 feet long if that turns out to be the case. Uh, this model is uh, with the tail curved uh, if it was stretched out, it would be uh, probably close to 7 inches. Uh, it's curved, so it's coming in at like 5.9, and it's like 3.5 inches tall. Uh, so um, if you uh, do your, um, if you were to do your uh, scale uh, measurements, if we go by the 135 scale, and uh, we use, uh, we assume that uh, this model would be seven inches if the tail was stretched out. Uh, and using the 135 scale, that would make this uh, creature about uh, just under 20 feet. So it wouldn't be 100% full grown or uh, you can classify it as a female because they probably came in a bit a little smaller than the males. But if you're trying to get them at uh, the estimated 23 feet, uh, which is what uh, 7 meters actually translates to, then um, it would be one uh, fortieth scale. So uh, I'll just have to deal with the 20 foot. You know, that's still close enough. You know, we, we, we not, not every, not every creature of this particular species grows to that estimated peak footage so uh, it's still all good um, and uh, yeah as you can see they really have uh, uh, assumed that uh, Spinops was a chunky critter uh, it was at 23 feet one of the larger ceratopsians uh, not as big as uh, say a triceratops but still up there you know it uh, definitely made its way into the 20 plus foot range so that's uh, our Duke the Spinops so next up on our rotating platter we have Brian the Pachyrhinosaurus here and uh, you see it's got some nice colors going along there but uh, once again the standout we're talking about that skull those frills you can see that uh, with the ornamentation at the top of the uh, the frill area that uh, Pachyrhinosaurus is classified as a centrosaurine dinosaur and uh, you'll also notice the uh, the uh, the big mound of bone on its uh, nose area it's uh, known there it's called a boss uh, he, it has that uh, 
in lieu of uh, nasal horn. And uh, it does have that uh, nice horn at uh, the center of its, uh, of its skull. And uh, yeah, it's got some, some nice paint apps. We'll take a closer look, especially at that skull and frill. In fact, we'll do that right now. We've got Brian, our Pachyrhinosaurus, up close and personal right there. Once again, because of those big heads, this is how we'll uh, take a better uh, views of those skulls. Pachyrhinosaurs are North American dinosaurs. They're about uh, they late Cretaceous. And uh, I didn't mention uh, the previous uh, offering, the Spinops, also uh, North American. Um, it was uh, there was a lot of controversy with that dinosaur getting off of uh, Pachyrhinosaurus real quick. Um, they uh, they didn't know whether to uh, classify it as a uh, as a uh, like you know it, it came in somewhere in between uh, Centrosaurus, which is the uh, of course the uh, the type name for the entire genus of Centrosaurian dinosaurs. Or a Strachosaurus, which is the most well-known Centrosaurian uh, dinosaur, and the second most well-known Ceratopsian, only after Triceratops itself. They didn't know if it was like an intermediate or anything like that, but uh, if they were to think that, the size estimates puts it uh, w uh, way larger than a Strachosaurus. So enough about Spinosaurus. We already had him. It's all about the Pachyrhinosaurus right now. So. Uh, yeah, taking a look at that uh, skull. Turn to the side there. Great paint applications PNSO has delivered, in my opinion, to this skull. You can see that boss, a big, thick, just glob of bone there. Um, he had to have been getting his ram on, you know, with predators and probably the males. Uh, when they were uh, competing for the females, they probably butted heads literally, and they still had to be careful because look at the, that uh, spike, that dual edge spike there at the center of the skull. The eyes are painted nicely too, and then looking at the front, I'll back it up some so you can see that ornamentation at the top there. Looks very, very nice. The rest of the animal, you could see uh, PNSO has really delivered on osteoderms and the the scalation and stuff and you got some nice uh, wrinkles and uh, they've got it going on pretty accurately it does have a cloaca slit up in there you got to look real careful there you go look at the booty hole right there and uh, you have uh, the nice nice paint uh, apps in my my opinion anyway so giving you a couple different angles that you got right there and looking off to our left and then of course that head-on shot and off to the right uh, Packy rhinos were uh, estimated to be between 16 and 26 feet long so uh, once again one of the larger ceratopsians even larger than the estimated size of a spinops uh, and uh, this model comes in, um, the measurements are at uh, about seven and a quarter inches long, about three and a half inches, three and a half, two and a half, three and a half inches tall, excuse me. And uh, that would uh, depend, uh, depending on what size you're trying to go for with uh, Pachyrhinosaurus being anywhere from 16 to 26 feet, it uh, can range up in terms of the scale up to and including, uh, I believe, 140 of scale. So. Uh, I'll have mine uh, right in there at uh, 135th scale would put uh, Pachyrhinosaurus for me at uh, 21 feet since they were different species that's the reason why the range was so long so wide between 16 and uh, 26 so that would put that for me it would be a uh, it would be a 21 foot long animal a mid um, more mid-sized uh, Pachyrhinosaur uh, and a little uh, larger mid-sized ceratopsian. If you wanted to get, if you want your uh, Pachyrhinosaurus to be uh, scaled at 26 feet, you would it would have to be, uh, uh, you'd have to uh, line him up with uh, models that are at the uh, 142 scale, 
which there are not many that are um, scaled that way, but you could fudge it. So for me, it's all good. 21 foot. It would either be a uh, sub-adult or a, uh, a, more, a smaller species. Still all good right there. So uh, off to our next candidate. Next up to bat, we have the Microceratops. Goes by the name of Perez. Uh, another North American uh, Ceratopsian. Uh, based up in uh, Utah, that's where they found uh, the fossils. In fact, the only fossils they found are in the Natural History Museum of Utah. And uh, it's only fragmentary skulls. I tell you, those skulls are so robust that uh, they managed to, uh, to literally stand the test of time Whereas uh, you've got you've got uh, creatures that are larger, more powerful, and uh, like I'm talking about the sauropods, big as they are, because their heads are so small, most sauropod skeletons are incomplete. They don't they don't have skulls. It's crazy, um, but their skulls are so small that they end up getting crushed and jacked up. Whereas ceratopsians, because their skulls are definitely their most prominent feature and most powerful feature, they're strong enough to withstand the test of time and. Uh, uh, in some cases just barely like in uh, the my Caraceratops is uh, case because we only have fragmentary fossils they don't even really know how large it was once again trying to play the estimate game like they did with the Spinops uh, they did uh, assume that it was a uh, smaller Ceratopsian and that's kind of reflected here in this model but uh, we'll talk about that after we get Paris off of the uh, rotating platter. So of course we're going to uh, take a look at that skull. Macaroceratops was also a Centrosin ceratopsian and uh, as you can see he's got uh, the prerequisite uh, ornamentation at the top of uh, the frill there. He doesn't have a nasal horn just a nice size beak uh, and he does have two uh, extra long uh, eye horns, horns above the eyes, so uh, that's uh, that's a pretty unusual. Uh, I don't I don't know if they really had that. Uh, he he definitely had uh, horns above the eyes, but um, I, it's only guesstimated that they're as prodigious as it's being illustrated here. This uh, Perez is also our first ceratopsian that's been posed with its mouth open. Um, because as you've already seen uh, up to this point, the previous two, their uh, mouths were uh, were shut, beak. So the great thing is we get to see the detail in the mouth. Try to get it close enough without it blurring out so you can see that. So it looks pretty good. Perez does have some fine teeth. The, the, the fronts, the actual beaks were toothless, but they did have grinders when you get past the beak area. If you can see back there on Perez's uh, his right side of his his uh, mouth there, you can see the teeth fine for grinding. And then trying to see that at the bottom. I hope you can see that. I don't know if it's translating well. He's got the uh, the nice uh, wet looking tongue. His eyes are bugged out. He looks like he's uh, he's been uh, doing it up on Molly or something like that. And then of course you see the uh, the paint on the frill right there it's pretty nice and uh, then of course going alongside he's got that uh, the uh, the osteoderms and the scalation the striping looking pretty cool pretty nice kind of drab I guess it could have I think this could have been spiced up a little bit there is some green there like in the the backs the, the back of the legs there's some slight green in there but uh, yeah, this is pretty drab even uh, by my standards. Uh, it could have it could have used uh, a little bit uh, more color, but uh, you know it is what it is. We'll zoom out just a skosh to get Paris all the way in. And uh, what else can I tell you about this guy? Uh, as I stated, he's. Uh, they only know of uh, this this particular species from some very fragmentary skull fossils. So any size estimation is exactly that. It's a guesstimation. And uh, 
this uh, creature comes in at, uh, I want to say, uh, six and a quarter and about uh, three inches tall. Um, they think it may have gotten up to about 23 feet, but um, they're not really sure. So uh, at 135th scale, anything can go with this. And uh, it is modeled to be kind of smaller than the previous uh, ceratopsians that I've already uh, displayed. So um, at the 135th scale, uh, this critter comes in at a little over 18 feet. And I think that that's suitable for how uh, this model was made. So uh, yeah, so that's Perez the Macara Ceratops time to move on so on our rotating platter going 360 degrees we have Aki the sign of Ceratops yes indeed and if you recognize that name you're probably thinking about the uh, the sign of Ceratops that was shown in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and it was the uh, the dino that was standing over a paralyzed Owen Grady and licked him on the face and uh, you saw how large that critter was well that was definitely oversized they didn't get anywhere near that big that sign of ceratops looked like it was even larger than triceratops in that film but um, in uh, reality they only got to about a uh, little over 19 feet long so uh, yeah, that was definitely oversized. And uh, after we get uh, our key off of the rotating platter, we'll we'll see uh, if this is uh, on point with, with 135 scale or if it's over or undersized as well. So uh, let's do that now and uh, get our key off of the uh, platter. So looking up close and personal at the skull of our key, the Sinoceratops, you see it's... Uh, painted well it does have a gloss on it that I wish it didn't have uh, the paint does look kind of glossy there and uh, but um, other than that the paint apps are great you see the paint on the frill you see all of the uh, all the ornamentation along the frill if you didn't know by now now you should know that that would uh, mark the Sinoceratops as a centrosaurian dinosaur it's got spikes there at uh, we'll call it uh, uh, nine and three o'clock just a little bit lower than that and um, some spikes there along the cheekbones it also has the uh, elongated nasal horn which is also customary of centrist in dinosaurs it uh, beak is closed on this one it's got uh, the eyes aren't as trippy as on the Microceratops but they're uh, they are he, he they was definitely wide-eyed for sure and uh, Looking at the rest, some nice uh, scales and wrinkles there along the neck, and of course osteoderms and uh, the scales got it going on. It's got nice folds in the skin there because you see that this left hind limb is drawn back, so they've reflected that by showing the stretching, which is cool. You've got the, the nice scales on the bottom there. It also has a you gotta really get up in there, but there is a, a booty hole right there. You see that line? So, yep, that's the butt check. And uh, painted in a green, kind of drab, olive kind of green with some browns and tans in there. So, uh, pretty uh, pretty nice. Back him up a little bit and uh, zoom out just a skosh so we can see basically all of him just a little bit there go down so it can be completely in frame um, as I stated uh, Sinoceratops was uh, j just under 20 feet long nowhere near as large as in the Jurassic World film and uh, this model measures uh, measures in at about eight and a quarter inches about a little over three inches tall and um, if you're gonna go by the 135th scale even this guy is um, oversized as well uh, those measurements at 135th puts puts the Sinoceratops at about 23 feet long so that definitely makes it oversized if you want to get it to where it should be somewhere between 19 and 20 feet uh, respectively uh, 
it would have to be like a 127 scale so uh, it is what it is this is uh, the first one I can't even rationalize to be at my 135th scale yeah, um, you may recall I was able to rationalize the Quinshusaurus uh, from the uh, the theropod overview Tyrannosaur in particular because of the newer estimates but uh, that's not going to fly with Sinoceratops. Sinoceratops was also uh, this is our first Asian our first Chinese dinosaur uh, the full name of uh, Sinoceratops is Sinoceratops Zucheng tensis. Uh, you may recall that name Zuncheng. That's because this lived at the same time about 73 million years ago uh, alongside this guy. The Zuncheng Tyrannus. And I'm quite sure that uh, they had some run-ins. And uh, it would have been nice if uh, the Sinoceratops was a little bit smaller so they would look more in scale. But uh, hey, it still looks pretty good. It is what it is. I'm quite sure that ultimately I will be displaying these two together in some kind of uh, dioramic pose. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's our Sinoceratops. Taking us home is Doyle the Triceratops and this is uh, PNSO's first offering of Doyle. They've, uh, they went back to the drawing board and uh, they've got a Doyle 2.0 if you will. Um, this is uh, a museum line uh, model unlike the, uh, the previous four that were uh, prehistoric animal line figures. So this um, it, it's a deluxe model if you will as uh, you can tell because it comes with a stand which is why I didn't uh, start off, I didn't introduce Doyle on the, on the uh, 360 degree platter. Uh, I uh, showed him um, as he came on the stand. And uh, this also is our first Ceratopsian that has an articulated jaw. So you can uh, open and close that jaw. And uh, as denotes by the frill, you see that it's uh, the frill is sans any type of ornamentation, spikes, what have you, that labels this Ceratopsian as a Chas or Chasmosaurian dinosaur because of the lack of the ornamentation. We'll uh, take a closer look at Doyle's skull. Uh, we're going to do that right now. Looking at our Triceratops, you can see that uh, PNSO has uh, really went colorful with the frill, turning them all the way front. You could see uh, all of the, uh, the the paint apps there, and uh, there are bony knobs along the edges of the frill, just uh, no ornamentation, so to speak. Triceratops, as you know, he's got the uh, the uh, the symbolic long horns above the eyes, as you can see right there, and the short nose horn. Once again, this being Triceratops, the most well-known Ceratopsian in the uh, dinosaur uh, record. Everyone knows about this guy, always matched up against its arch nemesis, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, his uh, mouth is articulated. So opening it up, you can see the, uh, the flesh in between the upper and lower beak. You see the eyes. His eyes, uh, unlike the previous two uh, dinos that I had just uh, showed you, he's got a more sleepy look to his eyes. So that's kind of uh, amusing. Looking in the mouth, you can see once again, the front of the beak is toothless, but you can see the two rows of teeth that go uh, where the, the beak part of the mouth ends. So you can see that it's got the tongue. Same thing looking at the top there, looks pretty cool. You've got uh, neck wrinkles because his head is turned slightly left. If you look at his uh, left rear leg, you can see the stretch of the skin because the leg he's, he pushed off of that leg. And uh, he's got um, the osteoderms and the, uh, and the uh, scoots and stuff like that. The, uh, the scalation. He also has the... Uh, they even put... Uh, uh, the name is escaping me, but um, 
in some regards, they actually uh, illustrate ceratopsians with um, like uh, feathering along from around this portion of the the the, uh, the hips down the tail. They they would have it uh, like that. Obviously, it's not done with uh, Doyle here, but it looks like uh, PNSO met met Doyle halfway and had those protrusions going out. So uh, you see, it's got the uh, it's lifted off the uh, the front uh, right leg there, and uh, yeah, now, even though it comes with a base, it can stand fine on its own, which is cool. So you gotta love that. It was uh, about 26 to 29, uh, almost 30 feet long. So it was uh, one of the largest Ceratopsian dinosaurs. Uh, it uh, was around, it was of course the Cretaceous, all Ceratopsians were uh, Cretacean dinosaurs. It was late Cretaceous, in fact, it came around about uh, 68 million years ago all the way to the end of uh, the era of dinosaurs 66 million years ago uh, North American and uh, you all already know uh, some of the critters it lived alongside Tyrannosaurus Rex and Kylosaurus a uh, few uh, differing hadrosaurs and uh, yeah so um, let's uh, take a quick look at his base so here's the base that Doyle comes with Doyle uh, is a pretty older model. Uh, he was out about uh, four years ago. Um, like I stated earlier, he was uh, redone. We've got a Doyle 2.0 that was uh, made last year, 2021. So uh, we will be reviewing uh, that update to Doyle. But looking at uh, the base, you can see the fine detail there. It's uh, You've got uh, mud over here and uh, footprint where... Uh, his uh, his left forelimb would uh, be placed in. He does have a peg right there, um, just for stability. He doesn't really need the peg. He stands fine. You've got that broken tree stump over there. Rocks, moss, pretty nice. More uh, moss over here. It's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice stand. Looking at it from the other side, it looks pretty cool. Looks very, very nice. So, moving that out the way and getting our guy Doyle back in frame here, so you can see more of him. Uh, I stated that uh, Triceratops was about uh, 26 to 29, over 29 feet uh, in length. This model is at about 10 and a half inches long and about uh, four inches, uh, four and a half inches tall. And uh, going for the 135th scale, that puts this guy right there at 30 feet. So Doyle is definitely in scale 135, and uh, which is cool because uh, you know how he should be posed up with. I'm moving him back because I'm bringing in the big boy to line up with him. That being, if I can get him all the way in. That being Wilson, our Tyrannosaurus Rex. See if I can get them looking a little bit more uh, challenging towards one another. There you go. So, uh, yep, that seems about right. Definitely seems about right. Doyle, the Triceratops, represents a 30-foot animal. And Wilson represents a uh, close to 40-foot long animal. So, yeah, they... Definitely scale well with one another. So take him out and get uh, a look at our guy once again. That's Doyle, the Triceratops. And now it's time for our Ceratopsian group shot as uh, we uh, have come to the end of it. The five Ceratopsians that um, I have. Uh, that I've had uh, prior to the acquisition of the newer ones that have come out uh, both the end of 2021 and this year. So uh, the amount of ceratopsians that I have has uh, basically doubled for the most part. And uh, we will see that as I'll begin reviewing those guys uh, 
after uh, this uh, video gets uploaded. So uh, we've got uh, at the top, we've got the big bad himself, Doyle the Triceratops, the uh, lone uh, Chasmosaurian dinosaur, and of course, uh, we've got the four that are adorning him. On uh, our left, we have the Sinoceratops, we have the Pachyrhinosaurus on our right, upper right, we have the Spinops and uh, Machiroceratops, which is uh, it's apropos that they're both on the same side since we only have fragmentary fossils of the skulls for both of those two guys. But um, yeah, everything is uh, everything with uh, the Ceratopsians. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. I uh, just wanted to uh, get us caught up on what I have for uh, when we play the uh, comparison game with uh, future full fledged standalone reviews. And uh, we've done that. So please like, share, and subscribe. Leave comments below on uh, what you think, uh, what you know. If uh, I got anything wrong with some of the facts I tried to lay down, please uh, correct me. Uh, the objective is to get it right. And uh, if you want to be notified for the next time I upload a video, please hit the notification bell and you will be advised when I do so. So um, we're going to conclude this overview. March of the Ceratopsians is done and uh, so am I. Thank you and uh, take care.